Sí. Well, good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to join you this morning. And thank you all who have been involved in setting up these sessions. I really wish we were meeting under different circumstances, but we are living through very challenging times, as we know. And I'm so glad that this important work can continue despite the restrictions that are so very necessary in the effort to keep us safe and well. The Measure in the Mountain project, funded by Welsh Government, and your role as our citizens' jury is so important, and I very much look forward to your verdict in due course. I was very pleased to hear that the evaluation of the implementation of the social services and wellbeing act has been extended for a year. There have been amendments to parts of the act and an emergency pandemic legislation. There's been relaxation of duties imposed on local governments. These may at least <clears throat> there may at least be a need to measure in, to measure a hill in regard to the consequences of this relaxation. I have every faith in Professor Mark Llewellyn and his team, and I wish them well with the work. Well, why did we need a new wax in the first place? Well, more people needed care and there was no extra money. So an independent commission was set up by the Welsh Government and the members of the commission at that time were Professor Geoffrey Pearson, Julie Jones CBE, Rian Hughes-Williams and Phil Robson. And it's very sobering to realise that that was 10 years ago 10 years ago and we know that the act became law in 2016. The report was named the vision to action and in one of the sections of that report headed voice and control there are the words of a third sector umbrella organization and they are people want a life and not a service. If I didn't say any more this morning, those words would leave a very powerful message. The Commission report led to an Assembly Green Paper as part of the process for developing the bill that was presented to the Welsh Assembly through a subsequent White Paper I'm saying green paper and white paper, that that was the process at the time. And I'm saying National Assembly because that's what it was at the, at the time. And I am reflecting back. Of course, we now have the Welsh Parliament. I was honoured to have led on this process and grateful to have been supported by a first class team of officials. This proposed legislation was radical and far-reaching and I realised early on that involving partners was key to the success of this work. Two partnership forums were set up. One was chaired by myself and involved health, local government, the voluntary and independent sectors and partner organisations. There was also a parallel form, a forum of officials chaired by the then Director of Social Services Wales, Rob Pickford. The work of these forums was invaluable in building a bill which would set the course of social services for years in Wales. And here I must pay a sincere tribute to my fellow politicians across party lines 
both from local governments and the National Assembly. It was important to me to build political consensus as I believe then and I believe now that social care needs to raise above party politics and no one grouping has all the knowledge and ideas. I believe this approach resulted in the most comprehensive and well-developed legislation being presented to the then Assembly. And I must stress that to me, one of the most important aspects at that time was the involvement of service users and carers, including children and young people. This, the groups were set up. I met with them for over a period of, of a long time, period of years. And, and the voices of, of service users, carers, children and young people were very important indeed. And I can say that I learned a lot from them. I remember coming away from a meeting with a group of young people at the time with these words ringing in my ears. Nothing about us without us. This bill was people-centred. It proposed a new way of working, using existing resources in a different way. We could not continue to do more with less. People are living longer lives and we should celebrate that, shouldn't we? It means that more of us need care and more of our carers need support. There was no extra money and there still isn't. Budgets have been cut year on year. And I would like to take a moment to pay tribute to local government. <clears throat> I would like the I would like to pay this tribute because I think it's very important to do so uh, uh, to local government in Wales for the way our local authorities have striven to deliver and sustain social services in the teeth of what has been a very difficult decade financially for them. I would also like to acknowledge with gratitude the commitment of social care workers and social workers. This commitment by this frontline, by these frontline workers has been very evident to us during the last months. Social services need to become a priority service alongside our magnificent NHS. We need to raise the profile of social services and I know that Social Care Wales is working very hard to do just this. The better our social care, the lesser the call on our National Health Service. We know that this simply makes sense. Well, to get back to the gist of the legislation, there needed to be more uniformity and consistency of permission of provision, sorry throughout Wales and services needed to fit around people and not the other way around. Another quote from a service user that has stayed with me is this, people are experts in their own lives. Service users and carers had to have a voice and control over their lives and they had to be involved right from the beginning in care planning. The bill was right spaced. It took serious account of the United Nations principle on older people and the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. Carers for the first time had their rights recognised. Informal care was undervalued and taken for granted. This had to change and the bill addressed that. Citizens have the right to be safe. Adult protection boards were established with a national advisory board. 
This was a big step forward. And I hope that the evaluation of the Act will look at the role of protection boards, both adults and children, and of course, children protection boards existed before them, and the role of the National Advisory Board during this pandemic. How successful have we been in keeping vulnerable people safe? On now to people's well-being, the improvement of which was a major aim of the Act as it received royal assent. Well-being, in my mind, is enhanced when people's needs are being met, when carers' rights are being respected, when people feel safe, when people feel they have a voice and control. When people who need care and their carers' lives are made better. When communities are involved. When preventative services are effective. When there is less abuse and neglect. When people can live as independently as possible for as long as possible. In my view, this is only possible when partners work together and when integrated services are promoted and delivered. And during my time in the Welsh Government, I saw great examples of this integrated working. I would ask how good we've been in recognising and identifying good practice and seeking to roll that out across our communities in Wales. Financial boundaries must go. Unnecessary financial boundaries must go. And joint budgeting, joint planning, information sharing between health and social care must be promoted. Treating the voluntary sector the independent sector and other public bodies with respect and as equal partners will surely benefit people who need care and their carers who need support. Recently, I've been uh, become involved in setting up a not-for-profit company in the Upper Amman Valley where I live. This project is being driven by Neath Patolbot CVS. The company is called Calon Camoid, Heart of the Valleys, and aims to deliver low level care, which is needed in my community. The Act clearly states that local governments must promote provision by the voluntary sector and other organisations. There is a need to deliver information, advice and assistance in my community. And we have been funded by a Welsh Government grant. I know this happens in many communities and I very much hope that Callum Akamoyd can be successful in delivering help and help and support. I do hope that the evaluation will find positive and enduring aspects of partnership working in Wales. I will bring my contribution to a close by voicing my concern about the future funding of social care in Wales. For many years, the charge for domiciliary care has been capped by the Welsh Government and this has helped many people needing care. However, I believe a national cross-party conversation with the people of Wales needs to happen and it needs to happen now so that a long-term policy can be developed. 
Let's enable that consensus to build, as the need for social care, in my opinion, crosses all boundaries and all generations. Thank you for becoming Judas, Diolch i chi am fod yn rheithwyr and contributing to this very important evaluation. I mean this sincerely. Your voices as service users and carers, after all, are the most important of all. Diolch yn fawr i chi, thank you. Diolch yn fawr i chi, hefyd Gwenda. Diolch yn fawr pawb yn licio hwnna. Thank you very much to you, Gwenda. Um, I believe we have some time for questions. So if the jurors ask the questions, we'll just make sure um, we get the right questions to you now so you can hear us. So who would like to ask the first question? Stick a virtual or an actual hand up. Are you going to print the questions? I'm I okay. don't know. Let's let's just try. I'll I can type them in for you, Gwenda. Right, Rob. Do you have a question? You've got a question, Rob. Yeah, not necessarily. Uh, hi, Gwenda. Um, thank you very much. That was so inspiring. I think it's obvious to all of us that you've put so much of your own time into everything that you've done, and it's just inspiring listening to you. And um, I also agree as well in regards to you know the the, the funding and the caps and so forth. It's, it appears silly in the day and age that we're in because early intervention is is priority to improving anything i think so it was lovely listening to you and everything that you've done so thank you very much do you have a question rob oh sorry yes um in regards to sorry in regards to um the setup in your local area you were talking about the information and assistance how did you go about that then was it was it difficult to to kind of set up or so, to, so, Rob, the the question is, how did you get the information to set up um, Kalona Kamoy? Yes. Yes. What 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 drove uh, what drove you to set this up? Okay. So, Gwenda, what drove you to set up Kalon? Well, I, 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 the when you, when you think of the preventative nature of social services. It's got to start right at the very beginning. Yeah. And, uh, you know, very often the GP practice is the first point of call for people who need care. Sometimes it's other means. And if you don't get the right information, advice and assistance at that point, then things can go wrong right from the start. Information and advice must be provided free of charge by the local authority. Assistance can be charged for. And uh, therefore, the, the setting up of Calon Akamoy has focused a lot on uh, information, advice and assistance. Assistance can mean things like shopping, gardening, uh, you know, can mean more serious things like uh, um, company needed to people who are, who are very lonely, anything that delays that person moving more intensely into the need for care. So Callan and will look at low level services. Perhaps it's cleaning the kitchen floor, you know, or, or dusting the bedroom. These things are not irrelevant. They're very important to people and their quality of life. So I believe, and the Act stresses very clearly on the need for that preventative care and the need for information, care and assistance. Thank you, Gwenda. Yeah. Yeah, Gwenda. Right, we have Nina has raised her hand and I think Joshua, did you raise a hand as well? No, okay. So we'll go to Nina, then Giles. So let's have Nina's question first, please, for Gwenda. Need to switch your mic off on. Sorry, Nina. Okay. 
or if you want to type, type, yeah. type, type the, the question, question in. Yeah. Can you see the, the mic button on the middle left, Nina? So you can... I do. Oh, got it. Got it. Go on, Nina. While Nina is doing that, do um, does Giles and Cyril and Sean, do you want to type your questions in? No, no, I'll ask them for you. Turn into the chat thing there, the chat function. Nina, how are you getting on? Okay, I'm just gonna, well, go on Nina. We're all learning, Gwenda. We're all learning. <laughs> Indeed. We are, we are. Well, <laughs> Nina so thinks cool. about, works out the technology. Should we try, because um, we've got you here, uh, Gwenda. Giles, do you try your question? I'm let it go in person. No, okay. Right, so the okay, okay. Well, Nina, Josh, what's up? Um, do you want to type it in, Nina, if you can? Your question, Giles, you can either type or speak your talk about your question. And Sean, I'm going to look at you, you've got your hand up very patiently there, Sean. Yes, Sean. Sorry, Claire. Claire. All well, right. Okay. Claire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Hi. Dilgenwaur. Dilgenwaur. I'm a Kavloinihad. Dilgenwaur. Thank you very much. The Doral Trust Ben. Please, Kayovin, you were talking about. Um, well-being works best when approaches are integrated and collaborative and one of the things you're seeking to do was um that the third sector and independence would be more respected and treated as equals so that everybody could collaborate on a more equal footing and the integration collaboration would all work better um but i'm just wondering um what measures were taken and have been taken so that carers um, are also seen on literally an equal footing, you know, so that the idea of partnering with, you know, informal um, at home carers also takes root. I was just wondering how that's been approached. Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, that's a very important question, and uh, the the act is absolutely clear, and I think it's section two, paragraph sixteen two, uh, somewhere somewhere close by there, and and the act is quite clearly and categorically that the local authority must promote services being offered by the uh, voluntary sector and the uh, and the and other bodies and you ask about the rights of carers the the act gives the carers i gave the carers for the first time in history in wales the same rights as the people they care for those rights extend to contributions into the care plan and I think, you know, the realisation that carers, are, informal carers, are actually sustaining statutory services. So it's very important that we look at the acts, and I'm sure that the evaluation will look at implementations of this part of the act that are very important indeed. Integrated working must mean that partners must be equal partners. And the acts in that part that I've quoted stipulates that. 
So the the Callan Camoy we've set up with that principle in mind, and uh, you know it makes so much of a difference. If local authorities and the voluntary sector, the independent sector, if everybody can work together with the same aim, to me it makes sense to everybody, and I feel very passionate about that uh, about that recognition of equal partnership. Diolch, Gwenda, and Diolch, Claire, thank you very much for that question. I'm going to read out Nina's question for you now, Gwenda. So Nina's question is, what, what are the three ways you are looking into to improve well-being? Well, uh, you know, I, I'm, uh, um, I'm retired myself now, but I keep, uh, I, I'm very interested. And I do like to keep informed about these things. The title of the Act to start with is the Social Services and Wellbeing Wales Act. So wellbeing is actually written on the face of that Act. And if we don't achieve wellbeing, then what do we achieve? So I've read out some principles uh, on wellbeing and... and uh, you know, I do believe the ones that I run through, people's needs being met, that's covered by the Act. There's a statutory obligation to assess needs and to meet them. Their carers' rights have to be respected. And we've written that into the Act. As I say, carers have the same rights as the people they care for. People being kept safe. We've got the Adult Protection Board. You know, that was the first time that an adult protection board had been set up with a national advisory board. So we need to look at, at what those adult protection boards are achieving. We need to keep safe. And, you know, there are uh, uh, things that can happen in households or outside of them. So that feeling of, of being safe is very important. People having a voice and control people's lives may be being made better communities be involved that's a very important aspect as well isn't it and i won't go into it again but i did uh, try and explain that with the calona Kamad company and preventative services we've touched on that preventative service information advice and assistance at the outset very important indeed abuse and neglect how much of this is hidden so there is a part of the Act that deals specifically with that and, and deals with ways that uh, communities and statutory bodies can uh, uh, respond to some concerns about abuse and neglect and living independently for as long as possible. So I know that's many more than three points, Nina, but I think we have to put all those together and build a picture of well-being that embraces us all and that makes sense to us. Thank you, Gwenda. I've got Thank two you. more questions for you now. I've got Cyril has a question, then I'm going to go to Giles. So, Cyril, your question, please. I think you might have to turn your camera off and oh, put your volume on, volume Cyril. On Okay, while you okay, sort that out, Cyril, I'm going to ask I'm going Giles' to ask Giles. question. And maybe, Cyril, you can type your question in and I'll ask it for you. So, Giles wants to know, Gwenda. So um, wants to know, Gwenda. Um, there, there, should be a there, removal. there should be a removal of financial barriers. Thank you. That's right. How long, do you, think it'll How long be? do you think it'll be? Yeah. So there should be a removal of financial barriers, Gwenda, is Giles' uh, point. How long do you think it will be before there is a complete integration of health 
and social care services where an integrated service is not taken over by the medical model of service but it's a social model of service instead thank you for that and uh, i think the social model of disability underpins the thinking uh, um, in the acts and i very much agree with that i believe in integrated services where they serve the best interest of of the person who need care needs care and their carers we shouldn't be delaying uh, services because we are arguing who's going to pay for what that is not acceptable but the the integration that the act covers the act states that health and social services must work together and you can read that in the act i can't point, pinpoint you directly to that paragraph but the act covers it that there must be cooperation and partnership between health and social services and that the voluntary sector and independent sectors must be treated as as true partners and where we have seen good examples of that then you know people's lives have been improved when we talk about the financial boundaries you know traditionally there have been financial boundaries between health and social services and other organizations but if we are truly going to achieve integrated services then there must be budget sharing amongst health and social services there must be joint planning and there must be uh, um coordinated approach to building a response to people's needs and you know it's well worth looking at that part of the act to to explain what exactly that means thank you ever so much i i'm sorry to say we've reached the end of time for your for this point of the jury this morning um and unfortunately, oh. we're going to have to pause Cyril's question, but that's okay. We'll have plenty of time to ask questions over the next four days. Um, but on Dirkhwar Yawnichi am Kamiran, but more parod i Sharad Evor, Reithwyr, Englyn ar Devdoriaeth a Sigmadigali Gweithredi. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to speak to our jurors and tell us about the act. I'm so impressed that you were able to quote pages and subsections from the act. Just shows <laughs> to me that you're, you have such a, a commitment uh, to this area of work and a passion for the detail. Um, so thank you very much for taking part. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And the last question, it is happening in some places now. Uh, was it Cyril who wanted to know that? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.